Welcome, everyone, to another Harris, Elmore, and Genoa Library podcast with me, Ariel, and Sierra. And Happy New Year! It's January Uh, already. Which is bananas to me. Where's the snow? New Year's already bananas. I know, we had a little bit of snow here and there. Probably not Christmas. We just, we don't have white Christmases anymore. I know it's quite sad. I just think it's funny because, like, okay, we live in Ohio, and that's the one thing everybody complains about. I hate snow. I hate driving. I hate shoveling. I hate seeing it, and it's like so much less than what we normally have. Oh yeah, for Ohio, Absolutely. so much less. Oh, for sure, which is crazy to me. But so you know, don't I'm, you complain out there? We yes, haven't got a lot I'm, of snow, but I mean, January and February could be a lot different. We could get a lot of snow. Mm-hmm. Uh, new year. Yeah, new year, new you, right? Isn't that what they always say? Exactly. I kind of put that a little bit in the script that I'll try to remember to read bits of. Because, <laughs> you know, it is a new year, but nothing says it's going to be great or perfect. Um, I think 2020 and 2021 both kind of kicked everybody's butts. For um, sure. But... People are strong. Y'all are strong out there. Uh, What what was that? That's a dog. I thought it sounded like a cat. No, it's so, it's like there's some houses on the other side of the alley where the library is. And I, there's some sort of truck out there and the dog is going to Oh, the dog is barking. Yeah. Um, That was so weird sounding. That's why I didn't know if you were going to be able to hear it. And then I was like, oh, you heard it. I lost my train of thought because I'm like, what is that noise? Yeah, it's a little puppy. It's a puppy. It's not like I just made a really sad point, but I did get to the best part. Because the best part is, you know, people are really strong and resilient. And and we push through all the hard stuff. So it's a new year, new you, and parts of it might be awful and sucky. But you're going to push through it and absolutely make the best of what you can. I mean, everybody's got, you know, rough patches and oops, I just messed up my computer. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no, we're OK. It's OK. I can't get to a point. I have no brain power this morning. None. Yeah, so. You know, it's going to be a better year, I think, especially from where we started off. And now mm-hmm. hopefully we'll get a whole new year uh, and get to just put the right foot forward. Exactly. And I wanted to share something with you guys. I was online this morning um, and I got on Anchor, which is where we started our podcast originally. That's where we were streaming from and recording from. And then it branches out and goes into other um, podcast streaming apps and things. So Spotify and Anchor are connected. Um, so when I went on Anchor this morning, I saw that it had that like Spotify wrapped. Do you guys oh, know? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what that is? So I do. If you don't know what it is, it's just like a look back on what you've listened to and things you've like, you know, if you have stepped over one song, they're going to put that at like your highest listened to song on your Spotify wrapped. So it's really cool. I didn't realize that Anchor did it. So I looked at that this morning, and it's Spotify for podcasters. Uh, Harris, Elmore, and Genoa Libraries podcast, welcome to your 2021 wrapped. And if you want, I can share my screen. I was going to read it to you, but let me share my screen so y'all can see it, because I was really excited. So let's go. There is no sound. It's just words. Um. So first things first, you had a lot of firsts this year. Go down. On January 4th, you released your first episode of the year, which we titled 21, 2021, New Year, who dis? (laughs) Hard to believe we made a full loop. You had some impressive growth this year in hours. We can't wait to see what you did yet next. 176%. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but that was like our growth for the whole year. I wonder if that means like recording hours. We're so not like sure. How- 
me well it, it says the hours too but it says we're not sure what they play in outer space but here's how your here's how your fans around the globe listen to you 62 percent of your fans listen to you between 11 a.m and 5 p.m making it the most popular time my oh. partner says your podcast is high on their to-do list Oh, that's it's so like exciting. Between lunch and dinner time, maybe when people are on their breaks at work or something. We released 891 minutes of content across 11 episodes. Thank you for sharing your 2020 with us. Oh, exactly cute. what it is. Exactly what they said. <laughs> cute. Aw. Oh, that was really oh, fun. Yeah. We get to see, like how much content we put out there, how many minutes worth of listen time and stuff. And I was looking at statistics to see, like, obviously we're in the United States, so the majority of our fan base is in the United States, but six percent of it is in Germany, and one percent really, is in, yeah, one percent is in Italy. Wow, like, dude, well, we welcome. are like reaching internationally. That's not something I ever thought we would do. Bonjour, no. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's really cool. And I apologize. I was so excited for this episode. And I, again, I just have no brain power. That's why I said blah, 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 blah earlier. Because I can't speak. Wow, that was really cool. I'm glad you shared that. Because I like saw it, but I didn't actually open it. And I'm so glad that you shared that. Yeah, I wasn't sure what it was. Because like... I mean, I looked at my Spotify rap, so I'm like, oh, maybe it's just connected to mine, and it's like all the podcasts I listen to and things like that. But no, it was for our show. Aww. I'm really excited about that, and I want to share it with all the viewers and all the listeners. Yeah, I think that totally makes like a, a definitely like a, a difference, and like people are listening, and we're glad to see that. <laughs> and I think that that's a cool thing to just tell our fans, like we wouldn't be making this show without you guys. We couldn't make this show without you guys. Um, you're listening to it and you're enjoying it. Maybe you're learning something from it. Um, and that's that's great. It feels like we're really accomplishing something. So thank you for listening to us for for over a year now. We're here in yeah. another January and uh, we get to keep going. So last January, we talked all about like New Year's resolutions. And I'm pretty sure I said like three things and I haven't achieved any of them. So that's great. <laughs> you know, now that you mentioned that, I should have looked back and said what I, like, re-listened to what I said I was going to do. Oh, yeah. I, I can think of two things that I said, but I can't remember if I said a third one. Oh, I, th I think I do know what all three of mine were, actually. Oh, yeah, I've definitely failed all of them. I don't know. I'm trying... I'm glad you remember. I'm like, buy a house maybe? Because if that was one, yes. Did that. That might have been one of yours. I don't remember. I do know yeah. that like mine was um, to work out more. And I get, I, I do that thing where like I'm totally gung-ho and I want to do it. And I do it for like a month. Yeah. And then I start losing track and then I drop it and I don't do it for a really long time. I, I just have like no motivation to do it every single day. Um, that's, a, that's the hard thing. Um, I, I failed on that as aspect. I've, I've gone up and down religiously. That's that's how I work out. It's, you know, every several weeks, I'll be like, yeah, I should do something. Um, yeah, but you pick it up back where you left off, though. And I think that's important. Like, some people just, like, say they'll do it, then they just never do it. Well, I got, I like to find things that are, I know it sounds terrible, but easier for me to do in smaller spaces or where I'm not like disturbing lots of other people. I don't want to be working out in a room full of people, even if like, you know, the people I live with, it just feels weird. <laughs> I don't know why. So, sorry, someone walked in and I waved at them. Um, I got, it's called a fit hoop. Have you seen those? The <gasps> <laughs> hula hoop one? Do you yeah. like that? So I've been thinking hoop. about trying it. It looks like a centipede. And it fits around your waist and you lock it in. And then it has a long string on it with a weight on the end. And you just throw like the weight on the string and it spins around you. And you just like move your body and your hips to like keep it going. 
And you're supposed to do it for 30 minutes, five times a day. Um, five times a or day? Or not five times, five times a week, not day. Sorry. Oh, like, holy um, crap. Who has time? Oh, um, it actually is. It is very fun. Um, but I, I have yet to get in the habit of doing it, like, every day. I do it, like, twice a week right now. And I'm like, as long as I'm doing it twice a week and can work my way up to it, maybe that's something. But it is really Absolutely. fun. Absolutely. Um, because I think hula hooping is fun, but you tend to get really tired and like you're not moving as much and you drop the hula hoop and you're just like, yeah, I don't want to do this. This isn't like that because yeah. you, you can't drop the hula hoop. It just stays on you. That's my problem. I'm not a very good hula hooper and I've oh. always wanted to be a good one. So like in gym class or like babysitting kids and I'll be like, this will be so fun. Let's hula hoop. And then it's like maybe two go rounds and it falls. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm not destined for the hula hoop. <laughs> They are fun. I do love hula hooping, so I'd like to maybe reapply that resolution this year and be like, I want to try harder again because I failed so miserably last year. Um, I remember the other two things that I definitely pushed under the rug in 2021, and that was like learning to make a sourdough starter and oh yeah yeah uh, like really practicing my violin. I've done almost nothing with my violin for an entire year. Um, so I'm definitely not still learning that. And I did try the sourdough starter for a really, really long time. Um, and it just, it wasn't working out. I don't know if it's the product I'm using, um, the air quality, or I wasn't giving it enough love and kisses, but it, it was making miserable bread. And I eventually just had to give yeah. up too because it was becoming really expensive to just like throw away a lot of the ingredients um, and, and make really bad bread. So those are my failed resolutions. <laughs> but, you know, resolutions don't have to be really big goals. Absolutely. I don't, like, I don't think there's anything wrong with making them achievable goals, like reading exactly. an extra book or like eating a little bit healthier or like, mm -hmm. I know I've been trying. It's been kind of hard since we're like fixing our house. Mm -hmm. but like I'd like to not eat as much processed food or like make more homemade dishes and stuff like yeah. that nothing that's, wrong with making a achievable goal that's what I I should I wrote that down for us to like maybe talk about and stuff and um I should really listen to like our advice because I'm not even listening to that like usually <laughs> my goals are so much higher than what I know I'm actually gonna achieve so like if your goal is to get out of bed just a little bit earlier in the morning, just start setting your alarm just a little bit earlier. It doesn't have to be like two hours earlier. Just be like a half an hour and yeah. actually get up at that time. Like make your goals actually achievable for you. Yeah, it's. I think it's silly for people to categorize them and like as someone else. Like we're all different people. Like we work differently. We're made differently. Like. Mm -hmm. If we have the same goal, like there might be different ways we have to go about achieving those goals. Exactly. Like if I want to get up, like when my alarm goes off, I have to set my phone all the way to the other side of the bedroom because I will hit the snooze button. Then I'll just get back cozy under my covers. But if I start getting up and moving, then I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm up. I can do it now. Right. I know. So I do that too. I set my alarm usually at like 630 if I want to get up at seven, but my alarm has music. And I've done it the wrong way where you set really, really awful loud music and it's supposed to like shock you awake. Don't ever do that. It's no fun. Oof. So I have nice music to wake me up and then I will hit the snooze button like two or maybe three times that it goes off um, until I realize like, oh, it's probably seven. And then I'll like stop the alarm and the music will keep playing. So then I'm laying there listening to something. So I'm like, well, I have to get up now. <laughs> so... I do have like that way of doing things, but yeah, I love that. That's achievable goals. Yeah, and they don't even have to be like, I've I want to do forty five new things this year. It could be like I want to do something new this year. Like, exactly. Stuff like that. Yeah, try try new food or try ride yeah, a like unicycle. Yeah, <laughs> whatever your goal is, like just start small. Start what you feel is achievable for you so absolutely like I said, if you want to get out of bed earlier start with just waking up just a little bit earlier. 
Uh, yeah, you I know. Stop, um, you said eating healthy. If you want to stop eating sugar, just cut out one snack a day that's, you know, like a candy bar and eat an apple instead. Yeah. What other um, resolutions do you have for this year? And I made a note so I can put it in my planner. So next time we get together for the new year, 2023, oh. I can actually remember what I did. <laughs> so <clears throat> I think definitely I have, um, I bought a tablet so that I could kind of learn a little bit more about digital art form and stuff. Ooh. And I don't know really about taking classes and things like that. I'm still kind of just getting used to drawing on a tablet. Um, but I would like to learn more about that kind of art form and actually do more um, digital drawings and things. I don't know what for yet. I just, I need to do something a little for me that involves drawing. Yeah. Um, and definitely I want to get maybe back into like sketching because um, I haven't done sketching in a long time. As many of you know, I, I paint. So I paint rocks um, and I sell them at my sister's store. And not that that's a bad thing. Um, I just want to go back to a little bit of what I was originally doing when I started drawing and painting um, and kind of reconnect with like that part of my own history, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Your foundation. Yeah. I don't really know what other resolutions I, I have. You tell me yours and it'll give me a second to think. Okay. So I have one, like my first one, I know is achievable. Um, it's just a matter of the timeline of getting it done. So since we've gotten this house, everything's in our garage because I have to basically fix and finish the whole house. So I'd like to organize what is currently in that space. Mm. So it's, I'm not playing that what's in this box because I can't find anything yeah. still. And it's been a while. So that'd be one. My second one would be eating um, more homemade dishes, like whether mm. it's making bread or I'd really like to try to make homemade soup. Oh, I have mm. a friend, she makes great butternut squash soup and it's just so good. And I would really like to do that. What episode did, were we talking about potato soup? I think Nathan left a link mm. somewhere down below. I don't remember what episode that was. That was like a month or two back. I talked about potato soup. You should go mm. get that recipe. It's absolutely amazing. I love potatoes and I love soups. That'd be great. Yo, I have a ton of potatoes at home. I should make it again. And it's just so easy to like put it in a slow cooker or crock pot and call it a day. And leftovers. Always the leftovers. Mm. Delish. Okay, keep going. Um. Oh, I... What was there was I had another one. Oh, I think it's um add a couple of new pieces of wardrobe to like my collection because I always I'm sure a lot of people think I wear the same like four or five outfits every week. Um, you're not wrong. <laughs> they all are clean. I do wash them regularly, as you should. However, I would like to you know diversify my wardrobe, if you will. So I can have a couple new pieces mm -hmm. because, you know, it's nice not to wear the same thing, but it's easy to do that because, you know, they go together. If you're in a pinch, you just put them on and I'm usually in a pinch in the morning anyway. So mm -hmm. I'm like, it's an easy go-to. So I'd like to do better about that as well. I know I, I'm the same. I just always wear what's, what's comfortable. And I have a lot of clothes I could wear, but I'm like, I don't know what that matches. I don't know if it's super comfortable. So I end up not wearing it. So I just wear the same yeah. thing. Yeah. If you know it's comfortable. But no, yeah, I think that's... those are good goals. And I think they're all really achievable. I, th I think so. That's, and that's what I would like them to be. I don't, I mean, the past few years have been hard and for everyone. And I just would like a goal that I don't have to like, I don't want to say push myself, but mm -hmm. struggle to have the mental capability to finish it. Right. Well, okay, so I think another something that I think is probably achievable for me is also kind of a work goal, if that's okay. Um, yeah, absolutely. So Kim has been training me a lot in like different parts of the library. Um, so I just want to be able to like keep learning and like achieve my goals and learning different aspects of like circulation within the library and things like that. Um, 
So that's kind of one of my goals is to like, just get better at the, my job. <laughs> kind of. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. That's good though. So, it's good to have goals. I think just in general. Yeah. So in light of goals in general, um, that kind of leads up to what we wanted to kind of talk about today. Um, which is book reading goals. I always end up doing that thing on Goodreads where Mm -hmm. you log your like reading challenge for the whole year. And it tells you if you read like five books, it's like, hey, you're you're part of the way there. Um, And I I think I've read more than I actually logged because I read a lot of manga and comic books. Mm -hmm. Um, But last year I had put down that I wanted to read 20 books and I logged 27. So I reached my goal and then some. So I wanted to kind of push myself this year to read even more than 27. If I could put down like, oh, I want to read 30. And then if I go over that, then like, dang. Right? Oh, for sure. That's what I'm pulling up my good reads as well. Because now when you mentioned that you read that, I'm like, I didn't set a goal for myself. But I know I read quite a bit. It's so bad, too. I have this one book that if you go to my Goodreads, it shows that I'm currently reading it, and I'm not. I <laughs> set it down because I got bored. Like, it's a good book, but I just, I was not getting through it. I was kind of struggling. So I'm like, I have to set it down and move on to something else. But I don't want to put down like, oh, I finished it because I technically did it. So it says I'm currently reading it, and it's a lie. I'm not. So that, yeah, what Ariel and I were going to do today is, um, well, I kind of already made a little bit of one, so we're going to talk about it. Uh, We wanted to make 2022 reading lists, like bucket reading lists. So it's all the books that we want to hopefully read for the next year. Um, But I wrote down that this doesn't include all the mangas that I'll read throughout the year, the list that I made, because I read a lot of manga. And I read a lot of manga with Manga Club and for my own personal things like that. And it also doesn't include new books that haven't come out yet. Um, Because like there's there's a couple of authors that I'm waiting for them to publish new books. And I don't know if they're coming out next year or if they're going to wait until 2023, possibly. But... um, Oh, and we can listen to audiobooks because audiobooks count as books. So oh, it definitely. doesn't have to be physically reading. If your goal is to read, you know, 18 books throughout the year, you can listen to half of those on audiobook and it still counts. Oh, definitely. And there's like so many studies that they've done where it shows like if you're either you're reading or you're listening, it does the same stuff to your brain anyway to stimulate the brain and yep. all of that good stuff. So I would, I listen to audiobooks. That's primarily how I get my reading done. So yes, I'm a big advocator for audiobooks. That's what I never really did listen to a lot of audiobooks, um, but I had recently got into it just using Libby through the library because um, it's free and you can, it downloads to your phone and then like you can listen to it in the car. If you don't have Wi-Fi, you can listen to it anywhere. Um, and then at the end of 28 days, it just returns itself. And if you're not Absolutely. done with it, you can renew it. Um, so it's it's super easy to use. So I, I kind of got into it there. And then this past year, I also got into using Audible because a lot of the authors that I really love only publish their audiobooks through Audible. Um, but I'm a stickler and I won't spend $14 on an audiobook. Every month, you get one free credit from Audible. So I'm just basically getting free books. I just wait until the next month and then I'll purchase um, another book off of there with my one free credit. So sneaky. I like it. Yes, I'm cheating the system. Audible, please don't kick me off. I love your audiobooks too much, but yeah. <laughs> That's cool. I didn't know they did that. I like Hoopla as well. Hoopla is another good one. And it's an instant download. So anything that's on there, whether it's an audio book, an ebook, a movie, a music CD, it's instant download, which is great nice. too. Because I've done quite a few of audiobooks that way. So I don't have to wait in line in case there's a line for Libby mm. by some, yeah. some, some chance. 
There, there usually is, depending on the book, if it's really, really popular or if there just isn't enough copies, you'll probably find a, a good weight on certain things, but most of the time they're, they're easily available. I know Hoopla does have a better availability system for things yeah. like that, but. So far, apparently on my Goodreads list, um, some of them like I've marked as red. So like I had a date of when I started and when I finished, mm -hmm. but there's a lot that I just like moved to wanted to read to read that I've already read them. And right. it, it doesn't tell me, but so far what I gathered 15 look about right of what I read this year. So I'm going to say okay. 15 for me, which is still pretty good, especially since I read personal books and my morning book group oh, book as well. Book groups. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's Which what sometimes I think. It's... Sorry, go ahead. I'm writing. Oh, I was just going to say sometimes it's hard to get into those books because that's the point of book group is like reading something that you wouldn't normally pick oh, out. Exactly. Yeah. Because I do think it's fun. I always wanted to get into book, into book group, but I'm such a slow reader, anyways. Yeah, I would not recommend Jane Eyre if you are a slow reader. <laughs> Um, just because it is a thick mamma jamma of a book. Yeah. I did listen. So we did that for book group. Um, it definitely, I don't think it would have translated well for, you know, our times. Um, but I was still happy I read it. Definitely interesting how, when you think about like when a book was originally written and like the huge significance of the meaning of like, oh, a female author and it was unheard of and the way that they acted or said things. And now you like, right. look at it now in modern day and you're like, Oh my gosh, I would not have even dealt with that type of yep. shenanigan. So it's definitely mm. interesting. That's funny. Cause uh, for some of the books I've had written down for like want to read the next year, they're older books like that, that I don't know if I'm going to make it through, but I put them down anyways. Um, so I put down, um, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea and Ooh, The Mysterious classic. Island, both by Jules Byrne. I did read 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea a long time ago, so I don't remember it very well, and I never read Mysterious Island, but I know that they both deal with Captain Nemo. Like, Mysterious yeah. Island, I didn't realize, but it does um, have Captain Nemo in it. So I want to, like, read that. And also, Les Miserables. Oh, yeah. I have never read that book. I have read I, excerpts from it. Um, that I one think, would be a good one. It's a big one, but I think it'd be pretty good. That's why I think I can get through it. I remember, I think it was maybe like eighth grade or something, and I didn't even realize that it was Les Miserables, but we read the part about him stealing the candlesticks. Mm. And the yep. priest giving him them and being like, or he stole the silver and he's like, oh, you forgot the candlesticks. I remember reading that and not realizing what it was until much later. Yep. We um we read that excerpt in French class because we had to try to read it in French and oh translate gosh. it. Gosh, <laughs> that sounds lovely. So I remember that portion very well. <laughs> can can you can you still read it in French? No, I'm, I would say there's a lot of key phrases that I know, which would be important, but I, maybe that could be a goal. I'd like to study up on my French again, because oh. I enjoyed being there in Europe. It, it's, it's such an, it's a different experience than being in the States. There's just so many other different things that they do, um, preservation, food, just culture in general. Oh, it's, yeah. it's fun to go other places and see how people live day to day versus your own I think. definitely I think that's why I have such an interest in like Japanese culture and things like that so I, I think I can also make that a goal and I don't know if this is the best way to go about it but I am trying to learn Japanese uh, Duolingo mm. which is the little app so I think if I can really put my mind to it I can make out like phrases and things now I've been doing it like probably half of the year now so it's not great, but I'd love to be able to like, I follow a couple of people on Instagram that are Japanese and they post pictures and all their captions are in Japanese. Like, I'd love to just be able to read that and be like, yeah. I achieved something, I can read that without thinking about it. Like, if I can recognize characters, I'd like Absolutely. to get to that point. Absolutely. That was like um, in the airport. I recently took a trip and there was this man and woman speaking in French 
And I was like, oh, trying to listen in to see if I could like pick up on anything. And yeah. very, very tiny, petite, if you will, petite. Um, so it'd be cool to be like, oh, jump in and be like, oh, come on, sa, you know, like, yes. I'm a pal aerial. Yep. But um, that would have to work my way up to that for <laughs> it would sure. Would be, be several years worth of learning, but it is achievable. Like we said, start. Home. Yes. We can do it. Yes. So I don't know. Do you want to like go back and forth and talk about the rest of the books we have written down or? Yeah. So I actually brought a couple of physical books too. Mm -hmm. These are newer books that have come out. Um, I know at least Genoa owns them. Um, Even though these aren't our actual copies, I had to order them in because I'm waiting for the audio books, but I was like, oh, this will be perfect. Cause I thought for some reason, I thought I was going to be able to have time you know, right before, you know, the holidays and everything that's going on to read it. Oh, silly you. I thought you were going to read something. I know. And I'm like, how silly is this? Okay. So let me see if I can give you the shot here. Lewis Enbridge. And it's called The Sentence, which it was interesting to me because I, I know she's written like a ton of books, Mm -hmm. but I thought was interesting is it's about a small independent bookstore in Minneapolis and it's haunted from November 2019 to November 2020 by the store's most annoying customer. Flora dies on All Souls Day, but she simply won't leave the store. Tuki, who has landed a job selling books after years of incarceration, that she survived by reading with murderous attention, that must solve the mystery of this haunting while at the same time trying to understand all that occurs Minneapolis during a year of grief, astonishment, isolation, and furious reckoning. So I just thought it was so interesting that it's like a mystery, it deals with a little paranormal, and it's set like in almost pandemic time. Just to be like, this is why you never judge a book by its cover because when I looked at that, it's got bright colors, almost reminds me of a quilt. It's got like those little quilt squares going on and it's called a sentence when it's like, yeah, I don't know what that is. You said bookstore. I'm like, oh, okay, sentences like in a book. None of that. I didn't expect any of that. She died yeah. and is haunting the books. Like, nope. So I'm just very, I'm intrigued by it just based off of the little synopsis. So this is on my to read list just to see if it's any good, because like you said, I'm like, how does this, this little quilt, it's kind of hard to see, but like there's beads, like little. Yeah, it does. It looks like the the book looks quilted. It looks really cool. Yeah. But yeah, that's why you never judge a book guy's cover because that's holding a whole mystery inside of it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So that's one, one of many I have, which I always have like a working want to read list. Like I read The Devil Wears Prada this year. Okay. (laughs) Not a fan. And please don't come for me because I know a lot of people like the movie and I read the book and then I watched the movie and I just wasn't a big fan of either. The movie isn't even relatively close to what happens in the book. Oh no. And then the sad part is, is the way that the author left it at the end there's a second book and I was like, Oh, you know, maybe it gets better. I'm curious to see how she's going to transition because it's the revenge of the Prada. So I'm like, Oh, how, how does one pick up after the whole conclusion? I'm trying not to give anything away because it was kind of like, Oh snap moment at the end. And it just wasn't, it was horrific. I would not recommend the second but then there's a third book in this series. So I'm like, man, people must enjoy it, but it's not me. That is so funny. And I wonder, like, that became like a, a pop culture icon sort of situation. Yeah. And I wonder if people were more into just loving the movies because of like who the actors were or something, or did they read the books? Like, is it an icon because they love both or because it's only the movie that they love? I yeah, don't actually I mean- know. In which Daniel, uh, Stanley Tucci is in it, which love him. So I'm sure a lot of people enjoy him as well. For sure, yeah. I was like, oh my gosh. So it was just interesting. I don't know, that's interesting. never, I don't know. That was never one I was like super curious about. But I understand what you mean. Like, oh, it's nothing like the movie. They almost never are. Exactly. 
But I can say one of mine um, that I have yet to watch because I wanted to read the book first Ooh. was new last year, and that was Dune. And I know it was on oh, HBO Max, and like I yeah. really want to go to theaters to see it, but I'm like, I want to do it right. Um, because there's a lot of fan base out there, and I don't want to just have the image of how do you say his name, Timothy Chalamet. I just don't know if I said that right. I'm gonna say yes because I do not. I'm not well educated in Dune, other than I know they have like an HBO movie. That's what I. I don't doubt that he played the character really well, but I want to read the book first and have the image that I make for myself of his character. Yeah. Um, not just the actor. So that that's a, yeah. that's pretty high on my reading list. I love sci-fi books, so I I don't think I'll have a hard time getting through it. I only wrote down the first one though on my reading bucket list because I don't know if I'll make it through the whole series in the year because I have so many other books that I want to read. How long is that series? Isn't it a couple books? There's quite a few of them. Let me look it up really quick. I was just there. being curious Dark because stories. I know like. Uh, typically I find a lot of sci-fi reads have a lot of um, uh, a lot of books in the series there's six books who are they mm -hmm. all equally as large as the the dune yeah I think some of them might even be bigger than the other ones um, I'm not sure I only bought the first one and another one that I had bought that is in its second in a series well, duology, I guess I can't say series, it's a duology, was Ready Player Two. Oh, I, loved, I wanted to read I love Ready Player One so much. Um, but I've yet to read it, <laughs> so I put that on my list for things to read this year. Yeah, there's like, I have so many, like I have on my want to read list, 98 books, and that doesn't even include the ones that I've have on hold right now for Libby oh you know what let me look at my my goodreads because I don't know how many are I might want to read but I can guarantee you none of them are what I put on the list that I'm reading off of right now well yeah and that's like I have I have so many so like um I've had people have suggested books to me like right now I have waiting for me the awakening um, I'm reading a book club book right now. I have Sparks Like Stars um, waiting for me to read as well, which that one is just intense. Let see, me see, this if is I can... crazy because according to my Goodreads, I have 231 want to read books. Woo! I know it's crazy because I don't frequent my Goodreads account. So I don't even know half of what's in my want to read shelf I put those in there years ago I might look at it now and be like I don't even know what this is I don't know what it's about and I probably yeah. don't actually want to read it that's why I didn't base my reading list for the year off of that one because I don't actually know what's on it so yeah that's the hard part is like if you don't use it as often it's hard to follow up mm, yeah so I know, and I even wrote down one of the books that, like, I read a bunch of times but didn't get to read in 2021, and so I want to reread it this this year, and that's The Phantom of the Opera, as I'm sure Ooh, I've yes. mentioned before in yes. multiple different ways that, like, that is my favorite written book. Um, so I'd like to reread it because I didn't get to read it last year. I've still yet to read that one and I, I own it. So Please I would like read to read it. it. You should read it. I own it like five times over. I love it so much. I know it, which I watched um, the movie first. So I'm sure it's, I know there's a lot of details that are not the same. Yeah, I think I did the same so. thing, but I still love and appreciate the book so much more than the movie. Nothing against Gerard Butler. He's amazing, of course, but the book is so much better. Um, I recently bought, well, I was buying Christmas presents and, the, the you know, last year, and I bought something for myself because it's a mask. So I'm like, oh, I can wear that at work. And it has, like, the Phantom's half mask on it. And it says, I am the mask you wear, which is a line from the song. Oh. Oh, I'm so excited. It still hasn't come. 
Oh, so the hard part is the waiting game. Yes, lots of things have got lost in the mail for me. Um, so I'm still waiting for it. Uh, but I was just really excited. <laughs> how could you not be excited? Oh, that stinks. Well, I'll tell you about this one. I guess I, I had like a paranormal kick or something because this one also seems kind Ooh. of like it. It's by Rachel Harris. Rachel Harrison. Oh, let me get into the camera here. It's called Cackle. It has oh. like this cup. I'm trying to get the with little yeah, spiders. It's like, and there's like spiders. The spiders. Yeah. Spiders all over a teacup. Yeah, and it says all her life, Annie has played it nice and safe. After being unceremoniously dumped by her longtime boyfriend, Annie seeks a fresh start. She accepts a new teaching position and moves from Manhattan to a small village upstate. She's stunned by how perfect and picturesque the town is. The people are all friendly and warm, and her new apartment is dreamy too, aside from the oddly persistent spider infestation. Then Annie meets Sophie, beautiful, charming, magnetic Sophie, who takes a special interest in Annie and wants to be her friend. More importantly, she wants Annie to stop apologizing and start living for herself. That's how she lives. Annie can't help but gravitate toward the self-possessed Sophie and starts to spend more and more time with her despite the fact that the rest of the town folks seem a little afraid of her. And like, okay, there are some things. Sophie's appearance is uncanny and ageless. Her mansion in the middle of the woods feels a little unearthly, and she does not seem to wield a certain power. But she couldn't be, could she? Dude, Sophie's a witch. Uh, that's kind of what it sounds like to me. And I was like, ooh, upstate, because I have people that live in like upstate New York. So I'm like, this might be cool to like see if it's like anywhere close to where they live. It has kind of gravitated me towards it. Also, uh, if my house had a persistent spider infestation, you yeah, don't live there anymore. You burn the house down, and then you go away. <laughs> you do not live in a spider-infested home. I don't care who you are. Yeah, so I just was kind of like, okay, it just oh, seemed really gosh. odd to me. Like, is she calling a stir uh, exterminator or? Her friend is like, it's like, come live in with me in my mansion, or right? Is that why there's a spider on the teacup? Like, there's cobwebs. Like, mm, maybe, <sighs> she just lives maybe, in the house full of spiders. Yeah, maybe the the spiders are like her. Uh, what do they call them? You know, like how witches, like they say, you have like a, a familiar. Yeah, exactly. Maybe. So I'm like, I don't know. It just seemed interesting to me. So like having I don't know spiders so. in her house was a precursor to meeting Sophie and becoming friends. Yeah, or maybe that's how she, like, stays so young, murders the new people in town. I have no idea. Whoa. She's a spider uh, yeah. person. She can turn into a spider. She's a spider ew. person. Ew. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> into, like, a human-sized spider. Not, oh. She doesn't even shrink down. Like, her body just, she turns into a human-sized spider that crawls on your walls. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh man. No, just no thing. No, thanks. I'll get the bug spray out before I let that happen. No, 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 nope. nope. I don't do spiders. Oh gosh. So, um, no, thanks. Let me look at my list. You were so smart. You brought books to share little well, blurbs these are and everything. Books that I had them at home and with everything going on, that's why I've been waiting for the audiobooks too, because they come, at least for me, it's easier to manage because uh -huh. some of them take a while to come in. So I can listen to one that I know I can access right away and then like wait till I have more time to listen to it. So I think um, some of the books that I want to read are here and I could go get them, but I'm not going to. Yours are fun because they're new books, and I feel like all the ones that I'm talking about are much older. I don't have a lot of, like, new, new books written down. Um, yeah. So, I one that's probably still very popular right now that I read the first book for and never finished the series is The Witcher. So, I did write down that I want to finish the whole series. I would like to read the entire Witcher series this year. I was going to say, is that before, did you watch the Netflix show? Because you know they came out with a season two. Oh yeah, I've already watched season two. 
<laughs> yeah, I definitely, I definitely, I definitely watched the show first, which you know is unlike me. But there's something about Henry Cavill, I just can't stay away. You have to have to get on that. Oh yeah, yeah. So um, I did write down a, a nonfiction book. I don't read a lot of nonfiction. Um. Oh, I um. Let's see. I have some nonfiction on my list. I enjoy reading. Oh, oh, it's not. So I checked this book out. I will pull this up online to share with you because I'm curious to see what you think. Okay. Oh, what is it called? Let me go on my CEO library. If you're sharing, yes, with me, I don't know the name of it. Um. So I'm gonna just hop on to the SEO Libraries app. If you have not downloaded it, great app to have. Digital card. You can see what you have checked out. You can renew holds, order books, the whole shebang. Very easy to use. Okay. We should we should start making our own commercials. Like every time we mention an app or something, we should go into like. And it comes across the screen. Yeah, it'd be like um, like the whole spiel. Like we just break into like. What's that one? That one dude's voice that does all the commercials. Oh, yes. It, it yes like I know that. Like we're about. just throwing out all the information. Like, you don't want to miss out on this deal. Get this app. Absolutely. Okay. So the book, I pulled absolutely. it up. Absolutely. Oh, wow. That's really good. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You don't want to miss this app. Download the SEO app now. Do it now. Just right, do go, it. Go ahead. <laughs> Just do it. Just follow your dreams and do it. Oh, I have a sweatshirt gosh. that has that meme on that. Seriously? Oh, yeah. I love Shia. I love so Shia. This is when I was like, I for, I've had it for a while, but it was like really big then. And I'm like, I want that on a sweatshirt. And it has like Christmas stuff like on it too. It's really funny. I'll have to wear it sometime. Hey, if you're in okay. Shia LaBeouf, just so you know, this podcast comes out in January. So like on January 1st, later in the month at Elmore Library, we're having a movie night and we're going to watch Holes, which is <gasps> I one, love of, like, Holes. one of the greatest movies with Shia LaBeouf in it. I absolutely love it. So make sure to check out our programs um, video on YouTube so you know when everything is and you don't miss it. Yes. Just do Great it. Great movie. Just do it. Just follow your dreams. <laughs> Go ahead. You're, you're, just, we're off track. Okay. Okay. This book, it's called, it's a nonfiction, and it's called The Quiet Zone, Unraveling the Mystery of a Town Suspended in Silence. I feel like that sounds really familiar. Well, this came out in August of this year, or well, 2021, I should say. Um, I'm going to try to pronounce his last name correctly by Stephen Kersey. It's spelled K-U-R-C-Z-Y. And I found this book when we were packing and unpacking cargo, which is our delivery system. And I was like, my gosh, this sounds crazy. And it's how it goes is deep in the Appalachian Mountains lies the last truly quiet town in America. Green Bank, West Virginia is a place at once futuristic and old fashioned. It's home to the Green Bank Observatory, where astronomers search the depths of the universe using the latest technology, while school children go without Wi-Fi or iPads, with a ban on all devices emitting radio frequencies that might interfere with the observatory's telescopes. Quiet Zone residents live a life free from the constant digital connectivity, but a community that on the surface seems idle is a place of contradictions where provincial meets the seemingly supernatural and quiet can serve as a cover for something darker. It sounds a little yeah. I'll say. <laughs> well, yeah, and there's a little bit left here where it goes, um, where the author, embedded in Green Bank, making the residents of the small Appalachian village his neighbors. He shopped at the town's general store, attended church services, went to target, sh went target shooting with a seven-year-old, Square danced with the locals, sampled the local moonshine, and in the quiet zone, he introduces us to an unforge unforgettable cast of characters. There is a tech buster patrolling the area for illegal radio waves, and this is in parentheses, electrosensitivities, 
who claim that Wi-Fi is dev deadly, a sheriff's department with a string of unsolved murder cases dating back decades, what? a camp of neo-Nazis plotting, plotting their resurgence from a nearby mountain hollow. Amongst them are all the ordinary citizens seeking a simpler way of living. No. Is, no. Yeah, and so the There's author so many... asks, is a less connected life desirable? Is it even possible? And so it's just like a crazy work of like investigative journalism is what it really is, which is like mind boggling to me. So I understand people that want to live a little more wirelessly and like without technology and things like that. I think there's other ways of doing it without creating your own commune out in the middle of nowhere where like yeah. people don't leave they don't accept newcomers unless you like vow to give up everything and don't talk to anybody and I'm really actually kind of concerned how they're like turn everything off you don't want to mess up the telescope or whatever like what's that telescope really for that's that's shady right there yeah, Something's, just... something ain't right there isn't that bananas? That's why I like I saw that and I was like, what? I have right. to read this. I guarantee you they have some sort of leader who was probably ex-military and decided he wanted to live this life. He got a group of followers to go help him build this community out in the middle of nowhere and keep technology away from people. And they say it's simpler, but there's just, just like it just doesn't sound right to me. <laughs> Well, and that's, like, the thing is, like, it's supposed to, you know, like, because of the astronomers and the, the crazy telescope, like, they're not supposed to do any of that stuff. And that's, well, like, the reasoning is. Cold case murders was, like, is this town so big they have tons of murders and they never caught a murderer? Well, let, let's see. How many people was... live in this town? Well, let's do, let's, you know, let's take a little rabbit trail here for a second. I need to know more because this is freaky. This is the kind of stuff you see on television because or you read in a fiction book. Um, you said there's neo-Nazis, there's cold case yeah. murders, there's astronomers, no technology. Like that doesn't sound like real life, but you're telling me this is a non-fiction book. This community exists somewhere and this is their life. Yeah, which I think that's like bananas to me. So let's see here. I'm trying to find. If Is I there even tell... information on this town outside of that book? Because, you know, they well, don't have technology. You can pull up images. So like there are images of like the tower. But look, I'm going to see if I can find population first. Well, according to. Ooh, ooh, okay, please stop. I'm not using my personal, so I'm like struggling just a smidge. <laughs> um, hmm. What is it? Is it the, uh, do, 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 do. what is the website called? You know, Census Bureau, the Bureau. Because. Yeah, because like they, yeah, it just seems so very intriguing to me. I'm like, what? How does one like just, you know, do that? It's kind of hard to find some stuff, honestly, which I don't know if it's because I'm on Yahoo. I'm, I'm not a big Yahoo user. Oh, don't use Yahoo. No, go to, go to. It's automatically go to goes on this computer. So weird. Oh, let's see. You can get real estate. I wonder how much real estate is. Green Bank Observatory. Oh, well, according to this, there is hmm, population, according to 2019, 182 people. 182? Yeah. That's a small town. <laughs> yeah. And according to this worldpopulationreview.com, um, for apparently they have 2021. Um, they would also confirm that it's still 182. Wow. Which according to this graph, 
in 2014, there was only 93, and then there was a spike into 2017 of 288, and then it decreased. So let me, let me ask you this, and I guess you okay. might not know, or maybe you will have to read the book. Are they cut off from like all surrounding areas? Like, do they import things from other towns or are there people like free to leave and like go and, you know, do their shopping or something? Or I would say they, at least what it sounds like, I would tell you, yes, it doesn't seem like once you're there, you have to leave. Or I mean, stay, you could leave if you needed to. I'm just not sure how that would work with a car. So, like, I assume you still have, like, electricity, because I haven't actually started reading it yet, but, like, what do you do when you're in the car and you're trying to, like, listen to the radio? Do you just not get any radio frequency until you're out of the town's limits? That's, yeah, that's what I wonder. Or is it, like, mm, like Amish country? So, you know how, like, they have mm. horse and buggies, but they still come into town to do their shopping and stuff. Because, like, yes. you know, Amish towns only have probably so many stores. They can only produce so much stuff. So, like, I'm sure this, you know, community probably has their own stores and set up of things. But, like, I'm just curious. Like, how connected are they to the outside world? Or did they cut themselves off? Like, yeah. do they not leave their community? Do they grow everything themselves? Do they bring in exports? I'm curious. I'm curious so. about Let's this strange little community I've never heard of in West Virginia. So let's let's take a look here at this map. So they also, it must be the whole town. It doesn't say the whole thing. Let me share my screen because there's a map here. Let's share. Oh, hello. Oh, there we go. Okay. So there's like this map here. So. There's the schools, there's the telescope, okay. and then there's the observatory itself. They have an airport. Yeah, but it doesn't a like... A office, a church, a gas station. So, I <laughs> would have to assume this, they still have stuff. They have a Dollar General. I'm not surprised to hear that. I was going to say, unsurprisingly, because that thing is like weeds. Dollar General is a weed, and they pop up literally everywhere. Yeah. So I just always think that's so interesting. So apparently it's, like, right here, but I'm trying to see how big it is, but it doesn't, like, outline it for me. But I would assume it's probably, like, in this surrounding area. Interesting. Yeah. I just, you know, I wonder how it works, like, not having any technology. Is it just, like, in your home and in like the school system and in your church like you don't have they don't have technology there because like you're gonna see it other places you could go into a gas station and, and they'll have a tv playing in the corner you know like you're not really gonna avoid it I'm just curious how much these yeah. people are committed to avoiding technology or is well, it just they don't want to own it and use it themselves which can be both things. I know some people don't like it, um, so they don't use it, but then you can get lost behind. And then if you can't get certain things done, like I know like Social Security Administration, um, unemployment, they want everything to be online. Like how does that work for that community? Don't you think their astronomers would need some sort of tablets and computers? Oh, I'm sure they have access to all of that. I'm sure they it's have like the private- people aren't allowed? Or don't yeah, want I it. would I shouldn't say not allowed, but they don't want it collectively. I mean, it kind of sounds like it's not allowed, according to what I read. That's, so that's why I'm curious when I saw like it's, it's a coldfish or something. Yeah, so I'm very, I'm very intrigued and wish to read this. I'm also so, yeah, a little I intrigued a now. <laughs> it can be done. Because I thought everyone was into all the tech everywhere because it's kind of, kind of, you need it nowadays. I'm going to write down my list, but I don't know if I'm going to eventually ever get time to read it. But it sounds very interesting. If anything, I'm, I'm just more interested in, like, just the, the process of the whole thing, the culture and yeah. things like that. I'm, I'm curious. 
Yes, so I'll have to let you know. Or if you read it, let me know so we can discuss. That would be fun. We should, maybe I should commit to reading it because then we could really talk about it. So that'd be a fun one. Um, well, my nonfiction might not be quite as interesting as, as that was. And you've probably seen the movie. If anything, I think a lot of people have. It is based on a true story, which is Catch Me If You Can. Ooh, yeah, yeah, See yeah. that movie? So it's Tom Hanks and Leonardo DiCaprio. So it is a really good movie, but it's based on a true story. Mm -hmm. It's a, so the book, I'll actually read a little bit of a blurb because you've been doing it. And so I will too. So it's, mm, the book is loosely based on the life of Frank Abagnale, who's a con artist. It's written in the first person, describes how Abagnale cashed $2.5 million worth of bad checks. He assumed various jobs, such as pretending to be a Pan Am pilot a doctor, mm -hmm. a teacher, and an attorney um, before he was eventually caught. And a lot of that um, he did before he was like even an adult. He was like 18, I think, when he first started scamming and getting tons of cash. A mind boggled. I, yeah. when I saw that movie, I'm like, oh my gosh. And it was like based off the book. And I was like, what? Right. As I bet you that's movie. still going to be really good, though. Um, sorry, I was trying to read a little bit more on it, but it doesn't really say. It doesn't give an exact age, necessarily. I'll be curious, though, to, like, see the differences between, like, the movie and the book. Because I know, like, how the movie ends. He, like, starts working for the police at the end. Um, I believe that it actually is true. Um... Let me see. So I'll be excited to see what you have to say of like so, the differences. He was caught by the FBI while living in France and served approximately five years in prison, six months in France and six months in Sweden, four years in the U.S. Um, and the book, well, that just tells what it ends. The book ends with an epilogue telling the story of Abigail's final capture and his rehabilitation, which resulted in the creation of his security firm. He actually went on. Um, to write books about how to keep yourself safe, how to protect your finances and things like that. Um, so he is like a security, he started like a security firm teaching people how to protect themselves from people like him, what he did wow. to protect yourself from con artists. Is he still alive? That would be my question. I believe so. Let me see if I can find him. I'll pull up his Wikipedia page. He, yes, yes, he is still alive. Uh, he's 73 oh, years old. old. 73. Okay. <laughs> um, he's living in New York. Oh. Yeah, it's like, it shows citizenship, U.S. and France. Um, criminal. For auto larceny, theft, forgery, and fraud. It shows how much time he spent in jail. Um, so he's books. He's got books out, personal life. Yeah, he wrote five books. Catch Me You Can is his first. And then The Art of the Steal, Real You, Guide to Identity Theft, Stealing Your Life, and Scam Me If You Can. And all those are like, kind of self-help books in a way of like protecting yourself. Wow, that's crazy. So, but I wanted to see, like, does it say where he currently works or something? I thought that he did start working. Um, sorry for the long awkward silence. No, you're good. Because I always think it's so, when I watched it, I was like, there's no way, like, this kid could, like, get away with it. And, like, really did. And I'm sure it's they like, probably, like, played it up and embellished a little bit. But, like, he, sure. did, he he pretended to be a doctor and got away with it. He, I don't think he ever actually performed sur surgeries or anything. He probably signed documents and things. He right. might have diagnosed people. Um, he pretended to be a pilot for a really long time. 
but never had to fly a plane. And I think they yeah, kind of like, showed they showed that in the movie a little bit. So he was like a deadhead. So he was a pilot going someplace else, but not flying his own plane. And they were just transporting him. But he got paid for it. And he forged like hundreds of thousands of checks. Cashed them like they were, part. yeah. Yeah. And he was never, just, like, it took a long time to catch him. Like, like dude, yeah, how, how I'll, are you that good at that? I don't know. My heart would be racing if that were me. And I wonder, too, I guess, can I see when he even started this? Because... Oh, this says he was 17 years old when he decided to impersonate a pilot. Wow. So he started when he was 17. Um, Bananas. I did not know this about him. That'll be something probably in the book too, but he was, he enlisted in the U.S. Navy when he was 16, but he was discharged after less than three months and was arrested for forgery. Ah. That's crazy. What was I looking for? I was looking for something specific. I don't remember. Mm. I was going to make a point somewhere if I could find the information, but I don't know what my point was or what the information was. So let's move on. <laughs> yeah, it was just crazy. I'm so excited. Be, to, I, I'm excited. I think we have a good starting point of all that that good stuff to discuss for next year. See if we've finished all of our reading lists. Oh yeah, I have a ton more written now, but like I want to read all of these. And a couple of them are rereads, um, but that's okay because they're still really good or I haven't read them in a long time. And rereading still counts towards your goal of reading how many that's books you want to read right. for a year. So. Absolutely. Don't undersell how many things you're reading. If you read the same book three times in a row, still counts mm -hmm. so. we should do that thing you know how um at the library we do like a thousand books before kindergarten there should be like a thousand books before a certain age for adults that they could start really at any time in their life but like I think that'd be a fun thing. Like, if you're like, well, I want to read so many things before I'm 50, there should be like a thousand books before you're 50. And the thing with oh, that man. is, it's just a sheet of paper, and like, you just fill in what it is you've read until you get to a thousand. Like, we don't dictate what it is you read. It oh, could yeah, be magazines, it could be children's books. Like, maybe you've never read Dr. Seuss and you want to read Dr. Seuss. That could be one of your books. Sure. So. I'm just spitballing. I've been doing that all day. <laughs> Do we have a word scientist today? Oh my gosh, yes. Um, I almost forgot, but I'm glad you reminded me. So Nathan and I were talking and we decided to kind of revamp our word scientists a little bit for the new year. And so starting now, we are going to be called word detectives. Ooh. So I think he's noticed a little bit that sometimes we struggle to find exactly what a word might mean. And then I don't always find the coolest definition when I Google it just to tell you guys what it is. Um, I'm not looking at the same thing he is. So sometimes we're not super enthusiastic because we're not getting the full meaning of the awesome word that he found us. So I'm going to share my screen so everybody can see what's up. He made us a little graphic here. So it says word cool. detectives, January, 2022. So this is how this works. He's going to give us a word and we'll get to discuss it for a little bit and be like, well, maybe it's, you know, dried fish or whatever definition we think that it means. And then we'll get some clues along the way because detectives work with clues to figure something out. So we'll get a few, I think there's, one or two clues maybe two to three um and that'll help us like hone in on what that word is so if we we guessed whatever this word is was dried fish and we get a clue that leads us into a completely different direction then we can change our perspective on that word and keep going and maybe we can deduce what that word is so this month's word is 
Rankle. Okay, rankle. R-A-N-K-L-E. Hi. Hmm. <laughs> I feel like I've heard this word before. And in my mind, like just seeing this word, it sounds like if you like ruffle something up. I don't I don't think I'm saying how I want it to say, but like you're like upsetting something or something upset you and you're like all riled up. Oh. Does that make sense? I think so. That's but what this I, sounds like to me. Like if something rankles you, yeah, it's like upset like you or like yeah. riled you up in a way. Like it's a snag, like something's caught or something. Hmm. Oof. This 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 one's tough. Rankle. Hmm. Okay, so let's go get our first clue. I would love, oh no. Clue okay. number one. Rankle is an intransitive verb. Hmm. Tell me what intransitive is. And I was just going to say, I'm going to pull, pull up the correct definition because um, I'm sure. Tell me what intransitive is. So a verb um, is like an action verb. Mm -hmm. So, oh. Stop, computer. Please stop. I do believe one of our word or one of our clues might be it used in a sentence or like something like that okay so uh, why is that it's because you're using yahoo again, aren't you quit it no i well yeah that too but i keep when i'm trying to use the mouse pad because i don't have a mouse i keep hitting it outside of the corner i'm not very good with word stuff okay. intransitive apparently oh well that's not very helpful um What's it says an adjective for... what not yeah it says adjective so there's adjective and noun where the adjective is not taking a direct object so example look in look at the sky and then the noun is an intransitive verb, which isn't very helpful. Oh, okay. And then the intransitive verb. Well, let us see here. So categorized by not having or containing a direct object. So um, is my first guess still a little maybe on the right path? where it's like you could wrinkle something? Well, let me give you an example of it in a sentence. This might change your mind. So in the sentence, I ran, ran would be the intransitive in that sentence. Or like the bird flies. Flies would be the intransitive verb. But couldn't you say like, don't wrinkle that because it won't like it? If this is not, yeah, so far it just sounds like. Well, okay, like you come up with maybe, something. I was going to say, because what I can tell, it just sounds like it's a describing verb is kind of what it sounds like to me. Okay, let's, let's get our next clue. I would like to, I would love a second clue. Clue number two, wrangle comes from several, several sources. Middle English, ranklin. Old French, rankler. Or medieval Latin, Draconculus. Huh. Is Dracula involved? I'm just going to say, um, I would just like skip to the third clue. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if this helps me. Rankler? Mm, yeah. Ranklin? Medieval Latin is completely different. Draconculus. That sounds like a Dracula disease. 
I would uh, <laughs> like to buy clue number three. <laughs> I'm, I'm struggling. Nathan this one wants is us to hard. figure this out. I feel like I having known clues I... probably does help. I'm just really bad at understanding things. Yeah, this this one's throwing me. I wish so, I would have brought a magnifying glass. What would you guess that maybe Ranclin or Rankler would be? Are you? I, I mean, like, that is like their origin words. I, unless you're like wrangling the sheep in, maybe. Uh, maybe. I'm just I'm grabbing at straws at this point. So clue number three: wrinkle in uh -oh. a sentence. I hope I didn't wrinkle you, Ariel, by changing the format of word <laughs> scientists without asking. Okay, I kid you not. Did, is this not what I said? Like, don't wrinkle something? I'm yeah, it so it sounds like it hearing this sentence. That you don't want to wrinkle something. I think it means yeah. like rile up or upset. I was just going to say, yeah, rile them up. Yeah. I feel like I think we know what this is. I just want to point out that I think I got it around the second clip. All right, let's see. Wrinkle. To cause or feel anger, irritation, or deep bitterness. Ooh, I'm feeling a whole bunch of deep bitterness right yeah. now. <laughs> to cause irritation or deep bitterness. Huh. So, Wrinkle. I mean, not quite what I said. It's not quite what I said. I didn't say irritation or deep bitterness, but it's like no, the cause. yeah. I could still, though, I understand. But yeah. I could still understand the sense with that the way you were originally going on it wow, it sounds rankle. really familiar or like it reminds me of something else but yeah to like upset or rile rile up yeah wow huh oh well oh there's more to it oh, i was gonna say there's more we got more there's information more. whoa when wrinkle was first used in English, it meant to fester, and that meaning oh. is related to French words referring to a sore and tracing to Latin dracunculus, which I said sounded like a disease. So the Latin is from Draco, the word for a serpent, and the source oh. of English's dragon, the transition from serpent to sores, is apparently from people associating the appearance of certain ulcers or tumors to small serpents. Oh. What? I'm sorry. Your sores and ulcers look like small serpents. Was that just like way back when or something? I've never seen an ulcer or a tumor that looked like a small serpent. Well, I, but then you have to think though too, like they didn't really have like modern medicine. So I'm sure it could have like worked its way down like your leg or your arm or something. Oh gosh, that's freaky. Or it was just like a whole bunch of like dots and like, uh, I guess you could say sores, just poke like a polka dotted, like around to make a serpent, maybe. Yeah. Oh, are you looking it up? I'm looking up Dracunculus. If I can spell it properly, let me see. Because it's such a weird word. I'm just curious. Oh, that's so freaky. So it's Dracunculus. And I don't know if I'm saying that right or not, but I'm just going to forge ahead like I know what I'm saying. It's a that's genus right. of nematodes that include parasitic species, such as Dracunculus. Ooh. Metanesis, which migrate within subcutaneous tissues and forms chronic ulcers in the skin. It's Gross. like a type of worm. Ugh. I'm glad I'm only looking at definition. I'm not looking at pictures. I'm just going to say that oh. makes sense though about the serpent though, if it's a worm. Yeah, I think I kind of understand now why they said that. I hate yeah. it so much. Huh. That was another episode of Word Detectives. Yes, <laughs> our first one ever. And I'm I think we to... kind of, we were, we were pretty much on the right path, I think. Um, I think you had, you took the lead on this one for sure. 
So we are really excited to like introduce this new format. So instead of word scientists, we will be detectives and like really yeah. feeling out the playing field and, and see if we can discover what the new word is before we're given the final definition. Yeah, I so, think this is a, a cooler format for sure. Yes, definitely. So we have Nathan to thank for that. So thank you, Nathan. Thank you, Nathan. Um, and if any listeners or watchers out there uh, think you have a book that you want us to add to our list mm, or yes. you've read something that you really think you just want to share with everybody, um, you can come see me at the Elmore Library or Ariel at the Genoa Library, or you can leave us a comment. You can send us a letter through the mail. Uh, or you can uh, email us, whatever works yes. for you. We're always here. Yes, that's true. <laughs> so thanks everybody for joining us for our first ever 2022 podcast episode uh, this January. And we can't wait for the rest of the year. We have tons of stuff planned, a lot of new subjects to discuss, maybe some guest stars. I contacted a few people and haven't got a response yet, but you know, we'll also have our coworkers and things play games yes. and talk yes. about different things. So we are really looking forward to a new year. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. We'll see you all next month. Bye-bye. Bye.